in today's video guys we're gonna take the hardest hitting defense based champion in raid shadow legends for a spin in the hydra clan boss we're gonna see what sort of damage we can get from there but let me just quickly spoil the final result for you i'm gonna show you how to get over 1 billion damage in hydra clan boss on nightmare difficulty now yes this will be definitely not a free to play friendly team this is actually on my account i'm just gonna showcase you my team but i recently pulled my third mythical champion right and if you guys watched the video if you had a chance to watch that before you've seen that was alice this is the hardest hitting defense based champion in raid shadow legends and honestly he hits so hard compared to the other defense based champions that it's kind of like coming from a different planet you know <laughs> let me just put it like that so he has a defense form and an hp form this first form right here, guys, it doesn't seem like very, very interesting for Hydra in general. Like with A1, attacks one enemy two times, basically. That's about it, you know. Then with A2, attacks all enemies before attacking, places an increased defense on all allies and repeats the attack, which again is pretty, pretty nice. The A3 puts a provoke on a target enemy. So this is a very, very good thing if you want to provoke the head of decay. Uh, you have a counter-attack buff on all allies and a block damage on all allies. Now, mine was not built with accuracy, but I'm going to show you the build and everything else towards the end of the video. I actually used the champion just for raw damage, and I had a different provoker. But this is a very, very good uh, champion to keep the Hydra head provoked. It's a provoke for two turns. He doesn't attack with this skill, so you're not going to get weak hits or anything like that. So as long as you have accuracy, he's going to get the job done. Then he has this passive, increases this champion's defense by 5% each time they counterattack, stacking up to 100%. So the more you're going to counterattack with him, the more defense you're going to gain. Very similar with Ninja, Harima, champions that actually increase their own stats when they do something. So uh, we're going to be in for a, for a surprise. Of course, you have the Metamorph, and then you have this badass looking form. He looks absolutely amazing in this form. Probably one of my most favorite characters in the game. Love the axe, the lightning on him, and just, yeah, super, super badass. This is an HP-based form. So let me start with the passive. For every, uh, for every one defense he has, he's going to gain 6 HP. So this will benefit him too. Now, he has a very unique thing right here, which is not really great for the Hydra, but uh, he has a chance to basically make the enemies that un are under a fear or true fear or hp burn to basically don't activate their skills it's a 20 percent chance for that to happen and it's a pretty damn crazy thing uh, to uh, to uh, to have you know with a1 attacks all enemies places an extra hit if the target is under an hp burn very interesting thing right here with a2 attacks all enemies places an hp burn and uh, if they are under a stone skin it cannot be resisted and he instantly activates the burn now I would love this to don't be conditional, so he's more powerful for uh, PvE content as well, because like this, yeah, you're going to put a burn, but you're not going to activate it, you know what I mean? So I would like to, to see that uh, being, uh, being a thing, you know? And gives you a heal, fully restores the destroyed HP, which is nice, places a strength and an increased resistance on all the team. So... He's a very, very nasty champion, guys. Alice, the Sun Bearer, he has a defense aura for all battles. Let's take him in for a spinning Hydra Clan boss and see what he can do in there. Now, this is the team that we are running, guys. We have Cardiel for a bit of healing, ally attack, more buffs, of course. Krisk, uh, more buffs, decrease attack, defense down, provoke, decrease speed. Those are kind of like his main things. We have uh, Tuhana Rack for block buffs, more decrease attack, clans, of course. We have Venus for defense down and weaken. We have Taras and we have Alice. Now, Taras has a six star crushing rend, which will deal insane damage. I wish I would have a blessing on Alas as well, but unfortunately, I haven't summoned one. You know, <laughs> I haven't summoned one. So hopefully in the, in the near future. Now I'm manual the entire run. If you guys know Hydra, you know to Hanarak, she's definitely not auto friendly. Like she's gonna, she's gonna mess up your team probably a million times if you're actually paying attention to uh, uh, an auto team so basically let me just quickly go at the, at the very beginning for whatever reason i waited a couple of minutes before i've i've done any any actions on here because i i've recorded my uh, my entire run 
and yes, the damage will be pretty damn, uh, pretty damn good. You know, I feel like uh, if I was paying more attention to every little uh, thing that I was doing, was gonna be even uh, even better. I was gonna be able to push even more damage. I have no protection sets on anyone, unfortunately. I'm just not able to get the nine pieces for any of these champions. Uh, I could probably do it for Cardiel, but I don't want to break my uh, build for the Fire Knight just to do it in protection. So uh, uh, that will be it. Now, probably you guys are wondering, Scratch, are you freaking mental? Why are you bringing a block damage and a counter attack champion in the Hydra Clan boss? What's wrong with you? Well, you know what, guys? Funny enough, He's actually working absolutely wonders in here. Not only because of that, but he buffs the rest of the team with uh, more buffs, especially Taras benefits a lot from it. Uh, uh, most of the champions will counterattack, dealing extra damage. And we have block buffs. Uh, through uh, the longer we go into the run, every now and then the Head of Mischief decides to mess us up. Actually, I had an extremely bad RNG with this, uh, with this run. I was getting resisted at the wrong time with a provoke, or uh, I was getting resisted at the wrong time with a block buff. So the head of mischief kind of like uh, stole at least 200 million damage from uh, from this team. I would say easily 200 million. So uh, it's definitely a lot of room for uh, improvement in here. Now I could have maximized the damage on Alice even more. Sometimes I was just targeting the uh, strong affinity heads. Sometimes I was over buffing even if i did not have to it was kind of like a one uh, one a.m when i was doing this run i was already kind of like oh you know I'm, I'm a bit tired right now but still we managed to get some impressive results with my alice with no blessing guys like i was so curious to see what sort of damage he's going to deal and the main thing is we only used the first form now i know a lot of you guys would have been like wait you haven't used the second form at all, the one with the HP burn? Actually, we haven't. Yes, true. That A1 on the second form sounds much better than this uh, on the second. But you know what? The damage that we're getting from here is going to surprise a lot of you. Plus that counterattack. It might not seem that important, but trust me. Think about Clan Boss back in the day and how effective counterattack was on it. It's pretty much the exact same thing in here. Now, especially if you don't have that uh, bugger coming back out, which is the head of mischief, to uh, do anything bad and steal some of your buffs, you're going to be in an amazing, amazing spot. Now, the whole idea with these guys is that Alice will do a double hit when you have a decapitated head or when they are under 50% HP. And I'm talking about the AoE skill that he has. And when that happens, he actually brings in quite, uh, quite a bit of damage. You'll be very, very uh, surprised with the numbers that he's bringing uh, in. I will slowly fast forward to try and pick some of those uh, hits, some of those cases where we have most of the heads decapitated and uh, we're just bringing in some big, uh, big numbers from, uh, from Alice, you know. To start with here at the beginning as well, the head of, uh, the head of mischief will spawn in a second, but we are literally getting uh getting ready to use that uh aoe you know so sorry not head of mischief then next head instead of the head of mischief will uh will spawn out in a in a second so taras deals a lot of damage with that crushing rand crushing rand is just so busted for hydra i know a lot of you guys are wondering what blessing should i take on my damage dealer for the hydra clan boss and i'm not talking about a crazy hour noot crushing rand is the absolute ultimate best blessing for it especially if they don't ignore any defense uh because you're gonna get so much damage out of uh out of them you know taras he got a bit shy right there <laughs> he was like okay should i hit or i shouldn't can we put that defense down so check out we have exactly 21 point something million damage and i only have three heads right uh the damage went out like a couple of millions. Not very impressive just yet. Now, the more we go into the into the run, the better you're going to to basically see it, you know. And of course, having too many spirit heads uh, is a is a bit of a problem. Let's see. When we were using the the A two right here, that's what we're trying to to find, you know. That will actually give us a a good idea of what uh, what we have in here. There we go. So the A two two hundred seventy four. 
282. So we dropped over 8 million damage with his A2, guys. Okay. That is a lot of damage. A lot of damage from a defense based nuker on the Hydra Clan boss. Honestly, it really surprised me. Like, I was extremely curious to try him in Hydra and see what sort of numbers we're getting from here. But the damage is just crazy. And plus, not only that, he brings his own damage. If you want to swap forms, it's absolutely amazing. Not a problem whatsoever. You are getting a lot of value from there too. But he's bringing a lot of damage for the rest of the champions. Imagine every, every single counterattack, how much damage it builds up on your team. You know, like it brings a lot. And it's not just that. It brings maybe a decreased speed from Krisk. It might bring a hex from Krisk because he's on a curse set. It might bring something else from a champion that will benefit your entire team and overall boost your damage, you know? So I really think Ales is top tier for, uh, for Hydra Clan boss. And it feels like this for quite a few, quite a few mythicals uh, in the game, man. You know, like uh, they're definitely bringing in quite, uh, quite a bit of firepower. Like I would still have to get a Garel. Garel is honestly the second best damage dealer in the entire game after Tranda. Tranda is broken. So I would, uh, I would say Garel is number one. You know, Tranda is just completely busted. And they will definitely have to fix her at the, uh, at some point, and same with Yumeko. I know how painful it is for a, a lot of you guys out there, but she's just kind of like taking it to uh, the next level. 80 billion damage on Nightmare, you know, with Etranda is just like, it is just too much, you know. But either way, Alice coming in again, 32, jump to 38. Of course, we hit uh, on one of the heads right there that had uh, the shield, uh, the barrier. Then we have uh, the spirit one that got some weak hits. And, uh, the other one was not decapitated, but we still managed to bring in 6 million with his A2, you know? And I feel like it's definitely a very, very impressive uh, damage. The A1 does 1 million, 1.5 million on a decapitated head. Um, on a non-decapitated head, you do like half a million on a, on a good day, I would say. So it's not the craziest damage from, a, from that skill, you know? I'm going to try to find, uh, uh, find a, a better situation here where we have more decapitated heads and we have alice going in uh going in ham basically you know like let's see what do we have here just to kind of like give you give you a better idea but he kind of like does around uh around six to ten million per uh per a2 and if you have all the decap uh, all the hydro heads decapitated at the same time which is a bit harder to do on a on nightmare you know uh, he definitely brings you quite a bit of damage. He can bring you over 10 million with that, uh, with that skill. Of course, hitting all of the Hydra heads. But that is a lot of damage, right? That is a lot of damage. Definitely not, uh, not a sleeper. And if you want to change form to uh, restore some of the destroyed HP, you want to get some healing, you want to get increased resistance, you want to put HP burn because you don't have a, uh, Venus in the team, maybe you have a Li uh, Lydia or somebody else, you know, and you want to really maximize everything, you can do so too. And uh, I don't think he's going to bring more damage. I'm very curious. Next time I said I will try him on the second form to see the, the difference where he does a lot of extra hits with A1 because they have burn on. Uh, he puts the HP burn himself. So I want to try him on that form too. And then I'm probably going to do a hybrid, you know, to kind of like go in and out. The only problem is my Lydia, she's not free for this team. I already have Venus doing the HP burn. So it's a bit harder for me to justify moving to the other form. I don't need the healing. I have Cardiel uh, doing the healing in here and to Hanorak. So there are quite, quite a few different things that make you like, okay, well, I don't need the second form. So I'm just going to stick to the to the first one. Let me just use that A2 uh, as much as possible. But I feel like right here we might be in a in a good situation where we can actually use his uh his a2 and really bring in uh, some uh, some good damage you know we do have uh, the head of torment which is almost decapitated we had no defense down or we can actually so that was a bit unfortunate in here we only dropped like uh, a couple of million damage defense down and we can are uh, are massive too i do have him built on a savage uh I have my 20% ignore defense from the Great Hall 2 on, uh, on the Hydra. And most probably here, we won't be getting uh, another, another hit with all of the, the heads decapitated. It's pretty hard to keep them all decapitated, you know? So there we go. Let's see before that. Where were we? Okay, so we have uh, 
we have to decapitate it here. Alice, are you about to use your A2? You see, the counterattack is, uh, is pretty effective. Now, you have uh, a few Hydra heads that have uh, AoE basic skills. You want to pray for those ones to uh, respawn over and over again, you know? Okay, so we used that before. Let's, uh, let's just go a little bit backwards. Alice, are you ready? Are you ready to get the job done? There we go. 772. 780. You see, again, 8 plus million damage. And we had one head standing, which did not got a double hit. Or even if it got a double hit, it doesn't really make a massive difference. That reduced, uh, reduces our AoE damage too. So I just kind of like wanted to show you how nice Alice is for the Hydra. Because I was very curious myself if it's worth using Alice in the Hydra. I had no idea, you know. So... Probably a lot of you guys might be wondering the same. And I just want to make sure you guys are not missing out because he's absolutely amazing in the Hydra Clan boss. Like, look at that. 1.1 billion damage. Yes, one hour and something. Uh, probably you guys are going to ask me, Scratch, were you feeling good? Why, why have you done that to yourself? Well, why not, you know? Every now and then, I do enjoy doing, the, doing a full Hydra run, you know? So let's see, let's see the, final, uh, the final damage in here, at least from, uh, from Alice, you know? So we have 1 billion uh, damage, 1.1. That's a lot of damage, though. And we have, of course, Cardiel with 76 million, Krisk with 170. He has the curse, uh, the curse set. We have Taras with 455 million with a six star crushing rand, which is just bonkers. To Hanarak with 35, Venus with 138 on a curse set as well. And we have Alice with. 289, almost 300 million damage, guys. That is definitely not some weak sauce damage, okay? So I just wanted to show you that Alice absolutely rocks Hydra with that, uh, with that number, you know? So very, very solid. But let me just quickly show you the build on him to kind of like get a better understanding of uh, what you need in order to make him do that sort of damage. So that's my Alice right here, guys. Now, I wish I would have a blessing on him. Even a four-star blessing would be absolutely amazing. More Kree damage, more defense, more stats in general would be more than welcome. Now, we have no blessing, right? I have him built on a Savage and a Speed Set. Total stats on Alice, 40k HP, 7.2k defense, more or less, 286 speed, full crit rate, 279 crit damage. No accuracy, how I mentioned. His role was not to provoke the Hydra, but if you want to, you can give him that role as well, and he's going to do an amazing, amazing job. Now, for the second form, as an idea, you have 45k HP, 6.5k defense. For every one defense he has, he's going to get 8 HP. So he will be having a disgusting amount of HP as well. Now, this form, I'll be very honest with you, it doesn't hit as hard. You know, you're not really going to get uh, such crazy hits, but I haven't tried him in the Hydra to really uh, say like, okay, he sucks in the second form or he doesn't. I don't think he he sucks, you know. Now, if I would have a blessing, okay, I would personally pick, of course, uh, what is it? The Incinerate, and that will be mainly for Arena. It will help him with the HP burn versus Stone Skin. It will be nice, right? 4-star gives you a lot of Kree damage, 45 Kree damage, you get 750 defense. You're getting a lot of stats on this champion from here, you know. So, uh, this would be a good blessing. Now, if you have a 6-star on him and you only use him in PvE, Crushing Grand is the absolute GOAT. He's going to deal disgusting damage. Like, if I would have a Crushing Grand on him, he would probably be very close in damage with Taras. Okay, that's that's how much damage he will actually do. Now there is a difference. Taras is void, no weak hits. Aras is not his uh, force. He will get weak hits, and uh, that would kind of like uh, uh, reduce a bit of damage. But still, he will be very very nasty. Those are the two blessings I would pick. I wouldn't really go for anything else. I'll be very very honest with you guys. And masteries, I have offense and defense three, not support. How I mentioned, I don't care about the accuracy. I still want to get a retribution, a counterattack from here, uh, more, more defense, blast proof, reduce the damage, get a bit of healing whenever the enemy heals. And we have Helm Smasher as tier 6. But that's the build on my Alice, guys. And yes, I was really impressed to see the result that I got with him from my Hydra Clan boss run. 
I do have one uh, counter attack accessory on him. I would like uh, I would like to have more just to stack up his passive. But unfortunately, the rest the rest of them that I have they don't really give him good stats. So I decided not to use them and sacrifice uh, stats. That was all for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know what do you think about Alice in the Hydra Clan boss. Do you think he's doing an amazing, amazing job or no? And if you are fortunate enough to have a mythical champion and you have him, are you using him in Hydra or no? That was all for the video. Much love and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.